What's up, family? I want to preface this message by saying that from time to time, I get these comments from men who say, damn, Willie D, man, why are you so hard on the men? First of all, I don't think I'm too hard on men. I think that I have a certain expectation from men, an expectation that I know that men can meet. And it's just me trying to get the best out of you. I want to see you win. I want to see you win in your personal relationships. I want to see you win with your woman, with your children, with your mother and your father in business. I want to see you win. That's all that is. This, it's nothing but tough love. Now, in this video, I want to talk specifically to black men. Everybody else, man, y'all can check it out, but I'm talking to black men. Now, there are going to be some black men who are going to jump in the comment section and, man, man you made these songs about women, man, and what about this and that? Let me tell you something. I've never once ever in my life made a song where I was critical of women and made a generalization. Never. Never done it. Ever. You can't find one song, verse, bar. Never. Now, I've made songs where I was critical of a certain type of woman's actions. Just as I've made songs where I was critical of a certain type of men actions. You dig what I'm saying? So let's get that out of the way before you go off. Because I know some of y'all stuck. You love to bring up old stuff. You don't want to go forward and you don't want nobody else to go forward. But I'm full of growth, partner. I can't do it. I'm never going to be stuck. I'm always trying to get better. But some of you guys out there, y'all Tars of Rust kids. You don't want to grow up. I get it. But let me say this. If what I just said don't move you, maybe this will. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. You dig what I'm saying? Now, Ricky Smiley. I've never really had a problem with Ricky Smiley. I think that some of his stuff is funny as hell. It's hilarious. You know, I've laughed at his stuff. But I will say that I've always had a problem with men wearing dresses and wigs. I don't trust them. I don't see anything funny about a man putting on a wig and wearing a dress. That's just me. Y'all say it's acting. Y'all just acting. Hey, that's your thing. But my problem that I have with Rick is these comments that he made about the dark-skinned black woman. Now, about a few days ago, he was on his radio show. And he said, a dark-skinned black woman walked into my kitchen the other day and my skillet started laughing. Now, what's wrong with that? A plenty. Because he's implying that uh, being dark is, is somehow humorous. That's amusing for a black woman to be dark-skinned. That's amusing. So you find an entertainment in that. And there's some black men, of course, who agree with this shit. I've read comments personally where guys were saying, man, look, uh, it's just jokes. Get over it. Well, with all the police out here gunning down black men, shooting black men in the head, in the back, in the chest, in the foot, and everywhere else they can think of, what is black women started telling black men, hell, it's just bullets, get over it. What if that happened? Let me tell you something. Comedians know how to tell a joke, how to tell an ethnicity joke and not be offensive. They do it every day, especially when it comes to white folks, because they know they cannot get through those doors. They can't walk through those Hollywood doors without white folks co-signing. So they know how to tell the joke. 
about white folks, well, white folks get the joke and white folks laugh immediately and white folks walk away and they're not offended. And, but somehow, when they tell a joke about black people, in this case, a black woman, they don't know how to deliver the joke in a way where it's not offensive to black women. And when the black woman say, hey, it's not a joke, the shit ain't funny, they actually get offended because the black woman got offended instead of checking themselves. Now, Ricky Smiley, instead of him checking himself, he decided to double down and he took to Facebook, his Facebook on May 1st and said that he was no longer going to be on Facebook. His team was going to be handling his Facebook page from now on. And this was due to the backlash that he received for telling that joke. And people came after him. And so he felt like it was necessary to, to just get off of Facebook. And this is his actual statement. He said, good morning, last day on Facebook. My team will be running this page from now on. Can't keep people out my inbox. Grown ass man want to chat. When they can leave the same GD message out box on the post. Can't do the morning show. Being distracted with mess. 90 GD people inbox me about some mess some unimportant chick made over a joke. I hate and avoid mess and messy mess. This is all caps. I have a different mindset. I'm trying to work. When Steve Harvey, Glennon Threat, my granddad, or other mentors, people that have added to my life, then come tell me. But these no-name ass people, ex-haters, I don't care. If y'all want to argue with these people, fine. Leave me out of it. That big ass check will still be in my bank account at noon for the dark joke. Now post her check for the dark documentary. A public figures, as public figures, we try to give friends, family, and fans access. The people feel entitled and leave you inbox with negative mess and just be on there. Thanks for all your support. See, if you notice, he mentioned Steve Harvey as one of his uh, as one of his mentors. That right there, in and of itself, is a problem because Steve Harvey is a career coon. He made his career off of cooning. And that would explain why Ricky Smiley did not humble himself. Because if y'all can recall, Steve Harvey told a joke at black folks' expense, a very, very offensive joke, and he doubled down. Remember when he told the joke about slavery on his talk show, on his television talk show? And they did the segment called Ask Steve, and a white woman asked him a question about how should she respond um, at a party when they're talking about historical events and things. And Steve Harvey said, you just tell him, I don't give a damn about slavery. He could have picked any topic to say, I don't give a damn about. But he picked slavery out of all topics. This is a problem, y'all, because y'all know damn well if he had said, I don't give a damn about the Holocaust, you would have never heard Steve Harvey's name ever mentioned again on television. Immediately, that same day, he would have been out of that, no more shows. But somehow, these black entertainers find it convenient to throw the black women under the bus. And the trip part about it is that a lot of these dudes are dark as hell. 
but they ragging on dark-skinned black women. Do you see the irony in this? People like Steve Harvey, Ricky Smiley, and all these dudes that have these huge platforms, when they get on these platforms and shit on black women, it's, these, are, these are not isolated incidents and it does not isolate a certain type of black women. It isolates all black women. It's hurtful to all black women. And it's like the dark-skinned men. I really don't see this as, as much with any other black people. It's the dark-skinned black men who are the absolute worst with this shit. They're the ones who are always injecting colorism into the discussion. A lot of dark-skinned black men hate dark-skinned black women, so they hate themselves. This is where they come from. This is where these fools, these fools come from dark skin. They come from black women, period. I don't give a damn if they're dark or not. They come from black women, period. So to disrespect the dark-skinned black woman is to disrespect the light-skinned black woman. Because she had to have that before you could even get to the light-skinned black woman in the first place. It all, we all come from darkness. It is totally baffling to me how some of these dudes carry on about the red bone, the yellow bone, the dark and This shit is... I'm going to tell you, man, it's sad. And those who partake in active white supremacy, they got to be sitting back like, oh, look at these fucking idiots. This is fucking great. This is great. This is greater than I could ever imagine. I saw a story about a little black girl that was 10 years old. This girl was so beautiful, one of the most beautiful girls I've ever seen. And she was dark, very dark, but super beautiful. And her mom had to take her out of school because she was being teased for being dark. And her mom put into another school that was more diverse, that was more ethnically diverse. And same thing. But the people who attacked her the most were, were black girls. We got a serious problem with this shit. Do y'all not understand that beauty has more to do with bone than tone? Do y'all understand that? And it doesn't matter how much money that you have. This dude called the girl unimportant. <sighs> She's not unimportant, dog. You know, uh, first of all, you, you know, she was a fan. The girl said, she said, I'm a huge, I was a huge Ricky Smiley fan. So now that she's been spending money with you all these years, she's a fan all these years, and then you offend her, and she called you on it, and now she's unimportant. So basically all the other fans are unimportant too. That's basically what you're getting at. And saying that you know, I'm going to have this big ass check for the dark joke. Come on, man. Dude, you got to learn some humility. It, it's going to come down to humility at this point, man. You got to learn some humility. Man, God got a way of checking. Y'all know you love to talk about God. You and Steve. But y'all constantly throwing black people under the bus with that ignorance. You know, you got to learn some humility, man. One way or another, you're going to learn some humility. Trust me. See, because that money that you got, that you think that's protecting you, it ain't going to always be able to protect you. Believe that. That unimportant uh, chick that you're referring to, her name is uh, Isha Johnson. That's her name. And she's now uh, in the climate that we're in in the context of all of these things that's going on with black people being murdered and disrespected and 
and just shit it on in America, she's more relevant now than ever. And she, that message that she gave you was right on, on the money, man. You needed that. You needed to hear that. You needed to hear that. Because Steve Harvey, and you need to get you a, a new mentor. Steve Harvey is not a good person. Steve Harvey is a damn coon. You need to get another mentor. Just because a person has money doesn't mean he's successful. This is what y'all got to understand. Some of y'all think money is, uh, I got money. I can shit on everybody. As long as I got money, I do what I want to do, man. If you don't agree with it, da, da, da. Man, trust me. Well, God got a way of checking you, boy. Look at Bill, look, look at Bill Cosby. It happens. Some people saying you're blowing it out of proportion. We're not blowing it out of proportion. This is not being blown out of proportion. You know, uh, telling that joke was being, that, telling that joke in and of itself, he blew the joke out of proportion. <laughs> you know, the reaction is not being blown out of proportion. The joke was blown out of proportion. It's not funny. Black women don't like the joke. The shit ain't funny. They're telling you it's not funny, dude. If they're telling you we didn't find it funny, man, hum take the L, man. Take the L, humble yourself, apologize, and then try to move on. You can't tell me, I'm tired of hearing this shit about where he's a comedian. He, you know, comedians say what they want to say and they find humor out of everything. They find humor out of dire circumstances. That's a lie. Comedians do not say whatever they want to say. I've been, I know a lot of comedians. I've been around comedy 30 some years supporting comedy with my dollars. Many comedians, including Ricky Smiley, I've been at the comedy clubs when they were making $30 a night and sometimes when they were uh, just getting on the stage because it was a packed house, they wasn't even supposed to perform and they you know, asked the MC, can they get on the stage or whatever and they got on stage because it was a good crowd that night and they didn't, even, didn't get paid. I've flown weekend after weekend after weekend out of town to go check out amateur comedy shows. I know a lot of top comedians, big comedians, and, and we have great discussions. They don't say whatever they want to say because there are certain lines you just don't cross. And when, you, when, I, when I see that comedian, the, especially the comedians that like to tell their little slave jokes and shit, when I see that comedian start telling Holocaust jokes, then I'll say, well, yeah, we reached that point. Comedians say whatever they want to say. But until then, miss me with that. These comments that y'all making, man, they're hurtful. These comments that y'all making aimed at black women, dark-skinned black women in particular, they're hurtful, man. You know? Uh, and and they're, they're destructive. Uh, Ricky, you got dark-skinned uh, black girls. You ought to know better, man. You old enough to know better. If this came from a, a little 20-something year old comedian that ain't been around, that don't have children, that hasn't seen life come full circle, hey man, I could give them a pass, but I can't give you a pass on this. I can't give you a pass on this. You gotta be called on your shit. And this message should go out to other comedians too. And I'm gonna tell you this. Uh you know, for the men out there, black men, we gotta start standing up for these for our women. I'm telling you, it's like Pac said, man, if we don't, we're going to have a race of babies who hate the ladies, and it's like we're that. We have so many black men that hate black women, and the problem is that a lot of these dudes got black daughters. What can they give her if they hate her essence? They can't give her anything. And we got some situations where we got black women that hate black men, too. But they, they're, just, they're in just as much trouble. But I'm speaking... For the men. I'm speaking to the men in this video. You want black women to get over you disparaging them, talking shit about them, trying to belittle them. Do you know that? Do you know how many little black girls pick up on these messages that you're putting out there when you say, oh, she's dark, she's this, she's that, you know, I like this type? You know what that does to our women's self-esteem? And these little black girls are someday going to grow up to be black women. 
And they're going to end up with black men and other men. And they're going to bring that pain. They're going to bring that low self-esteem with them. There's, there are black women right now who are lawyers, who are engineers, who, are, who run multi-million dollar companies. And they struggle with self-esteem because of many of the seeds of doubt that black men have planted. We got to start protecting these women. We got to. We have no fucking choice. I'm telling you. There's a plethora of things that you can tell jokes about. I love a good joke. I'm a damn comedy connoisseur. I love comedy. You can talk about a whole lot of issues that people are going to find funny. Skin tone, especially in this climate, is not one of them. There's an old saying, Ricky, to much is given, much is expected. Black men, we got to do better. Ricky, you got to do better. Humble yourself, man. I've been there, trust me. Humble yourself, it works. No more talk.